Dude, dude, I think right there. Do you see that? Oh, shoot. Okay. Where? Up at the top. On this palm tree that can go right through your hands. There he is. There he is. This is the egg eater snake. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's one-of-a-kind adventure care series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go Beyond the Glass. We're here, right outside the village of Polonic, looking for the ruthless and the toothless, the egg-eating snake. Now, egg-eaters love areas with lots of birds, and these palms are a huge bird attractor. So we're gonna hike around at night and see if we find any egg-eaters on the crawl. Other snakes we can see here could include Philothamnus, the bush snakes, possibly wolf snakes maybe even file snakes. I mean, this is surrounded by natural habitat with just this one interruption, which kind of simulates more of a savanna amongst a jungle. So it is pretty productive, and there's no telling what we'll see, but there's quite a few cool options. Seven, 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 snake. Okay, no, don't get too close. So this is a stiletto snake. Stiletto snakes have side swiping fangs, so they can actually bite you without opening their mouth. That's why his head's down. He's just sitting there waiting to go pop, pop, pop. They also have really long glands, so they pretty much don't run out of venom. The venom melts your tissue. They go by a lot of names, but if you've ever been wondering why I'm missing a thumb, it was one of these guys about 11 years ago. I'm not gonna get any closer because I know exactly the damage they can do. Plus side is, I can do the thumb trick like nobody else. There you go. Strange snakes with a horrible disposition and no safe way to hold them. If you grab them behind the neck, well, rule of thumb, you'll be down one. I can honestly tell you they make boring captives. It's like having a box of dirt and nothing else in there because as their other common name, burrowing asp implies, they're always burrowed. Well, they're interesting snakes. They are pretty terrible captives and I thumb my nose at this species. No, they're actually cool, but they're totally not our target and don't keep them. You can often find egg eaters on the crawl, and you can find them in trees, so we kind of have to cover both the terrestrial and the arboreal zone. But this is when they're active, so this is when we should see them on the move. So this little nut is what's causing all the fuss. Here in West Africa, it's an important part of their diet. They've been eating this for ages, but around the world, it's replacing a lot of rainforest. It's crushed up and produces palm oil, and uh, it's really one of the more difficult ecological issues of our time. This is in almost everything in your house, from chips to cosmetics to soaps to shampoos, and you might not know it because it goes under so many different names, but it's coming at the cost of acres upon acres, upon millions of acres of rainforest, and a lot of endangered species are being put in a bad situation for it. So I always say, really look into an issue like this. It's one of those you should read up on. Because palm oil has become such a hot topic item, there are groups like the Roundtable for Sustainable Palm Oil that are trying to make an effort to improve upon it. In season one, we saw the devastation caused in the orangutan's habitat. For Americans, it can be very easy to feel separate from this issue. Dude, dude, I think right there. Do you see that? Oh, shoot, okay. Where? Up at the top, on this palm tree that can go right through your hands. Oh, and these shoots are bad. shoes are bad for this. Ah, shoot. Yep, those are sharp. Oh, and there's ants. Lovely. Oh, crap. There he is, there he is. This is the egg eater snake. Now, egg eater snakes do look intimidating, and when they're intimidated, they flatten their head, they make a little heart-shaped bend, and they make that sound, they look just like a saw-scaled viper. But in fact, 
they're totally toothless. Yes, egg-eating snakes are dentally impaired. As their name implies, they don't eat pineapple, they eat eggs. They swallow them whole, and there's actually a little spine internally that cracks the egg. They swallow the egg, and they spit the rest of the shell out. And he looks like he's been dining well. Look at this guy. Such a cool snake. They're, they're such a interesting species to have adapted to eat just eggs. Another thing they do is see that puffiness? They inflate their necks. It's just another defensive mechanism. Egg eaters are packed full of defensive mechanisms. But in the end, all bark, no bite. All righty. Well, pleasure to meet you, sir. Time to let you on your way. Uh -huh. Happy omelet hunting. Well, we got an active egg eater, so now I'm gonna take my measurements. Couple quick habitat notes. They do actually use both the ground and the height, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to offer them both and shelters both up high and down low. Give them options. Now in captivity, they're usually fed finch or quail eggs, which you can often get at specialized grocery stores. Here, they can be feeding on any number of birds, finches and all sorts of small canary type species. One thing about these guys is because they're pretty strictly nocturnal, uh, their temperatures are usually lower, low at 80s, high 70s. Fun animal to work with if you ever have the opportunity. I know some people are working with them a bit. And uh, you know, the biggest challenge with them is finding a good food supply. But now with uh, online vendors, it's getting a lot easier to do that. Why don't you open up the door to work with a really clever critter like the egg eater. I think we're gonna go get some breakfast for dinner. <laughs>